Good afternoon, Your Honours. This is case number IT 0039A, the prosecutor versus Umchilo Kreisnik. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kreisnik, can you clearly hear and understand the translation? Yes, Your Honour. I will now ask for the appearances of the parties. First, for the prosecution. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours. Uh, appearing on behalf of the prosecution, Peter Kramer, to my right, Barbara Goy, Matteo Costi, and Katerina Margetz. Assisting us this afternoon is our case manager, Lourdes Galicia. Thank you. Uh, now, counsel for Mr. Krasnich on the matter of JC. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, Nathan Dershowitz, as counsel on JCE. Uh, thank you. And the uh, Michael Scuria. Thank you. In accordance with the scheduling order issued on 26 February 2009, the Appeals Chamber will now deliver its judgment in this case. Following the practice of the tribunal, I will not read out the text of the judgment except for the disposition. Instead, I will summarize the findings of the appeals chamber. The summary is not part of the written judgment, which is the only authoritative account of the appeals chamber ruling. Copies of the written judgment will be made available at the conclusion of this hearing. This case concerns events that have occurred in 35 municipalities in Bosnia and Herzegovina between 1st July 91 and 30 December 92. On 20 September 2006, the trial chamber found Krajnic responsible for persecution, extermination, deportation, and inhuman acts, all crimes against humanity under Article 5 of the statute. The trial chamber imposed a single sentence of 27 years of imprisonment. The trial chamber found that Krajnik participated in a joint criminal enterprise whose objective was to ethnically recompose the territories under the control of the Bosnian Serb Republic by drastically reducing the proportion of non-Serbs through the commission of various crimes. It held that there was a leadership component of the JCE based in the Bosnian Serb capital of Pale, which included Krajnik, Radovan Karadzic, and other Bosnian <coughs> Serb leaders. The local component of this JCE was based in the municipalities of the Bosnian Serb Republic and maintained close links with the Pale based leadership. The prosecution filed its appeal against the sentence on 26 October 2006. Krajnik filed his appeal on 12 February 2007. And counsel on the matter of the JC filed a supplemental appeal brief on his behalf of 7 April, April 2008. And Michael Scoria filed his appeal on 8 June 2007. The appeal hearing in the present case was held on 21st August 2008, and three evidentiary hearings took place on 3, 5, and 11 November 2008. I will start <coughs> with the grounds of appeal raised by Michael Scuria, followed by Krasnik's grounds of appeal and JC Council's supplementary challenges. Finally, I will address the appeals on the sentence jointly. In his first ground of appeal, Marco Scuri argues that Krajnik's right to a fair trial was infringed and that he was ineffectively assisted by counsel. First, he asserts that counsel Brasic failed to hand over the case material to counsel Stewart in a timely and orderly manner and did not provide a significant work product. The appeal chamber finds, however, that the trial chamber adjusted the pace of the trial to allow for numerous non-sitting days. 
Thus, the appeal chamber is not convinced that Council Brush's failure to hand over the case material to Council Stewart in a timely and orderly manner resulted in a miscarriage of justice. Furthermore, while the appeals chamber accepts that the war product handed over from Council Brushish to Council Stewart was not in as good state as it should have been, the new defense team benefited from some of the work done by the Brushish team, in particular the pre-trial brief. Moreover, the new defense team was allotted a substantial legal aid and time for pre-trial preparation. Thus, the appeal chamber concludes that Krajnik suffered no prejudice as a result of the failures of Council Brasci. Turning to the alleged failure of Council Stewart, Marcus Curie alleges that Council Stewart was manifestly unprepared to commence the trial in February 2004 and committed a grave error in failing to apply for deferral prior to the commencement of the trial. The appeal chamber finds, however, that the Stewart defense team was not grossly unprepared to commence trial in February 2004. And the Michael Scuria has not demonstrated that the insufficient preparation of the defense team at the beginning of the trial resulted in a miscarriage of justice. And Michael Scuria further submits that Council Stewart failed to adequately review the material disclosed to the defense and that he had read only one or two percent of the case papers when the trial started and no more than 15 percent of the documents 13 months into the trial. The appeal chamber notes that as acknowledged by Council Stewart, he delegated the review of the documents to his team as appropriate. Therefore, Michael Scuria has not demonstrated that the defense's review of the disclosure material, imperfect though it may have been, has occasioned a miscarriage of justice. Furthermore, Michael Scuria contends that Council Stewart failed to obtain proper instructions from Krajnik prior to the commencement of the trial to determine an appropriate defense strategy. Council Stewart testified on appeal, however, that he had a specific understanding of the defense strategy prior to trial, based in large part on instructions from Krajnik. Hence, this argument is dismissed. And Michael Scuria further alleges that the inadequacies in the preparation of the defense case led co-counsel Mrs. Lucas and case manager Mr. Schmerich to withdraw from the case in 2005, which further diminished the effectiveness of Krajnik's representation. The appeal chamber notes that the leaving team members were immediately replaced and that lead counsel Stewart remained on the case until the end of the trial. This argument is thus dismissed. And Michael Scuria also asserts that the trial chamber accorded the defense a manifestly inadequate amount of time to prepare the final brief by 18 August 2006. However, the defense was informed as early as 26 April 2005 that the final brief would be due 11 working days after the close of the case. This allegation is thus dismissed. Michael Scuria further argues that the trial chamber breached the fairness of Krajnik's trial by impermissibly restricting his right to examine the prosecution witnesses. However, Michael Scuria fails to detail how the trial chamber abused his discretion under Rule 90F of the rules. This contention is thus dismissed. And Michael Scuria also submits that the defense was not accorded sufficient time and resources to prepare for cross-examination of the trial chamber witnesses. However, 
The appeal chamber notes that the defense received the material related to these witnesses reasonably in advance of their testimony, and that these witnesses were well known to Krajnik and his defense. Similarly, the appeal chamber rejects Michael Scuria's argument that the defense was accorded insufficient time to cross-examine trial chamber witness Mrs. Plavcic, as the defense only used three quarters of the two hours and 40 minutes allotted by the trial chamber to cross-examine her.